Hi. Good morning, everyone. Hard and, to see um, you all, but we've got to wake you up. <laughs> so this is Radha Subramanian. She is president and also the chief research and analytics officer at CBS. And we're talking about research-led transformation at CBS and how it shapes the future of viewing. So um, big welcome. And I mean, the first question, I suppose, from where you're sitting in New York, I mean, when you look at the, the, the things that are shaping the future of viewing, what are the big, the big things that you think about? Right. So I'm going to take a step back, right? So sometimes the US can be incredibly isolationist, and sometimes we are supremely integrated into everything else that's happening in the world. And this feels like a moment. Uh, let's start with sort of global, political, macroeconomic things, and then we'll get to media in a second, where we feel very much part of the world, and we feel part of the globe. I mean, we're all dealing with recessions and inflation and the war, I think the war actually uh, played a crucial role in emotionally, not just um, practically bringing the US back into the world stage and getting us involved. And so when I just heard the first couple speakers, um, often things that are happening in the US are quite different than things that are happening in Europe or in Asia or somewhere else, but it feels remarkably similar, right? Um, so we're all in streaming, we're all streaming all the time in many different ways, and you and I will unpack that. Um, the US is, has a particular uh, concern or focus on what's called cord cutting, cord, cord shaving, more so than the European or the Asian um, context. Uh, we're all negotiating um, SBA, and AVOD, and the word that's used a lot in the US, I don't know if it's popular here yet, is SAVOD, which is this mixture of you know subscription and ad-supported um, video and demand. Uh, sports are hot, you know, sports, if foot, your football is hot, our football is hot, all kinds of football is hot, people are <laughs> watching, uh, people are concerned about the news. So, but I want to take a step back and tell you at least what we are seeing in the US um, uh, from a US perspective and certainly from a CBS perspective. Um, and perhaps you'll all look at your own businesses with that filter as well, right? So you open up any trade publication or any newspaper and it's all, oh my God, the sky is falling, linear TV is dying and all of that. But uh, the team and I sit with the actual numbers every day. And when we add it all up across screen, CBS is thriving. Like we have as many, you know, we have seven of the top 10 shows. We have as much viewing as we had a couple years ago. Now you just have to add it up differently. You have to add things um, via streaming and AVOD and uh, time shifted and all of that. So I do feel that um, there's a lot of angst around the business and business models, and rightly so, because every few years we have to reinvent business models, otherwise why are we paid, right? Uh, but from a viewing perspective and a content perspective, things couldn't be better. Um, and we're very proud of the work we're doing, including taking some of your shows like Ghosts and making them better. So, um, you know. Uh, <laughs> and introducing NCIS to even more countries uh, than it had been before. So, uh, so I think we need to, there, there are business challenges, probably uh, with slightly nuanced differences, but not fundamental differences from other parts of the world, but um, um, you know, a ton of similarity. And what I hope you will see in your own work is um, a ton of positivity as well. So this positivity around total viewing, I mean, does the advertising industry get that? I mean, no. I mean, let's be clear, right? Uh, the, the investment community does not understand it. Let's start with them, because they are ultimately the biggest bosses of many of us. Uh, so Wall Street and the city don't get it, right? Um, and, uh, and I don't think uh, the ad ecosystem quite understands it as well. Uh, but it's also, but to be fair to them, it is complicated. They were used to having one system of record. In the US, it used to be Nielsen that just popped out a number, and the number was the number, and everybody could look at the same number. Uh, now, it is different. There are multiple sources of data, and specifically, a lot of data, whether it's from CBS or from Netflix, only sits in our house at this moment, right? So, um, so on the one hand, you know, we're like, we wish the world would get it. On the other hand, we acknowledge and realize that it's our story to tell and our job to get the word out there, um, which is why jet lag or not, you know, Justin got me to come over. Okay, and you mentioned obviously the uh, SA VOD, or subscription advertising VOD. I mean, do you, and you talked about the recession at the start. I mean, do you think that uh, subscription AVOD is just television economics reasserting themselves after 10 years of streaming where it looked like subscription might be more important? Or is it a sort of a, a near-term thing because of recessionary pressures? 
So I think these are things that I'll leave to the economists to forecast, right? Um, and, I, and this is where we're different from the academics or the intellectuals on this topic because, and I have a doctorate as well, so I don't completely uh, disagree with classic researchers. But the way we operate is we're coming in every day trying to make a series of decisions. We're trying to decide which shows to green light. We're trying to figure out who to cast. We are trying to figure out how much to pay the people whom we cast. And we're trying to figure out the best monetization models. So what I will say is at this moment, um, Sabad makes sense for a lot of us. And by the way, Pure Fast or Pure Avod, because we our company owns Pluto as well, uh, makes a ton of sense, as does selling net debt to me to Netflix, as does another division of my company selling Emily in Paris to Netflix, right? So these are all pieces, and we're making a lot of individual decisions that hopefully we we think will make collective sense yeah. down the line. Okay, and just in case anybody doesn't know, you are part of Paramount now. Yes, uh, CBS is part of Paramount, yes. Okay, and I mean, that, that question of sell into Netflix, but in some ways you also compete for them for attention and now for advertising dollars as well. I mean, some companies like Disney have had a sort of a process of repatriating their sort of content back into their own direct-to-consumer streaming services with a view to just making themselves a bigger destination and by, you know, by contrast, they weaken the competitors, if you like. But you still sell to Netflix. I mean, do you think you'll keep doing that or will you repatriate? So um, my boss, George Sheeks, the CEO of Netflix, um, sorry, CEO of, CEO, CEO of CBS, um, came out very publicly last week and issued, uh, you know, our state um, or a point of view on this, which is we will make things for our own platforms and we will sell um, elsewhere. But again, I think it's easy to intellectualize or overcomplicate these discussions, but we're again, we all have budgets, we have quarterly goals, we have things we're trying to achieve, we have long-term views, we have short-term views, and we're trying to make the best decision with the data that we have. Uh, so at this moment, you'll find our content on broadcast, you'll find the same content at the same time on AVOD and SAVOD, Right, um, and you'll find them in various time-shifted ways, and you'll find other. Sh sometimes you'll find NCIS on Netflix and us, and different seasons, and sometimes you'll find something purely on a streamer. And we're just trying to be very pragmatic about this. Okay, and in terms of how CBS grows in in the streaming space, I mean, is that part of it? This kind of complex window in is that an opportunity that you can now have back catalogs that go in different places at different times? And, and potentially more viewing? I mean, super fans, they love these back catalogues. I mean, is this where the growth comes from or where does it come from? Yeah, so, um, so what we have um, realized, right, and we've realized for a long time now is that the customer is the one who's in control. By customer, I mean the actual consumer is the one in control. I can't tell a 25-year-old which screen to watch on or which screen not to watch on. I mean, that is, you know, um, a failure from the second uh, we're going. So we just try to make content available and not overcomplicate windowing. So we will drop ghosts um, on multiple uh, platforms at the same time. But as a company, we won't do the same for Top Gun. Right? Like Top Gun will live in theaters for a really long time um, and then eventually go to streaming. But a lot of the television content uh, will be available. You know, there isn't overcomplicated windowing because you don't want to frustrate the consumer. You don't want to confuse them. And if they know they can get something on Thursday, they don't have to worry about which pipe it comes through, just that it is available to them and they can choose the pipe that comes into their home. Okay, so what would you say is the biggest threat that you need to overcome right now? So I would say that, again, it's the lack of understanding of what's happening in the ecosystem. Because we sit at individual companies and we see a lot of data and we see a lot of insights and we see a lot of viewing, but when we pick up anything, any trade, that's not what we read, right? So I think retelling the narrative and telling the, the narrative of strength and um, of a content, you know, golden age, um, and sort of trying to take the fear away uh, in an environment that's already recessionary and inflationary and everything else. So I would say it's less, of, you know, I worry less about this competitor coming to the marketplace or that competitor changing their um, uh, business model. In fact, in the US, what you're seeing right now is a high degree of cooperation between the various major broadcasters. Um, so um, I think a, a lot of our challenges are in the narrative and, of course, like everybody else, uh, in an overall challenging environment. OK, what about youth viewing? Because although, you know, even where linear is relatively stable, I mean, youth have always been low viewers anyway, but there seems to be a, a sort of a, you know, a, a prominence of it now. They're, they're lighter than ever. 
So this is actually uh, quite fascinating. And I have two children who are Gen Z, so I do get to do, you know, individual research on, on top of representative real research. Um, and it's really fun to watch. And you'll find there's a ton of viewing happening with you. It's just on different devices and different screens. I have one child who will only watch um, on their little Mac, and another who will always, you know, um, colonize the biggest available screen around. But again, they usually watch in a binging or bingeable um, fashion. But if I can share some data from my own company, right? Uh, we are finding that the median age in streaming is about you know, 20 to 30 years younger than the median age in linear. So it's less a crisis of consumption and more a crisis of measurement or storytelling or articulating uh, youth viewing. Okay, well let's talk about measurement now then, because um, I mean there's a big session on measurement later and you know we're seeing this kind of um, proliferation of measurement solutions, measurement companies, it looks like there's not going to be any one big measurement solution anymore, but that does bring some complexity, you know you've got multiple people that you have to deal with, interoperability stuff, I mean what do you think of this sort of alternative measurement ecosystem that's evolving? So um, the US, which is kind of funny for a, a country that prides itself on competition, was a tremendously monopolistic market forever in the space of measurement. Um, but there has been a lot of innovation over the past three to four years, and we've been deep into it, right? So we have partnerships that we've announced with VideoAmp and iSpot, and there, you know, there's a lot of work that's being done um, uh, with several different companies, and we're always open for business uh, to anyone who wants to talk to us. But I want to flag one specific um, challenge uh, that is more than sort of the business model challenge. Uh, and yes, you have to work with multiple people, but again, you know, uh, that's what we're paid to do. Um, what we all need to be really aware of and cognizant of is not throwing the baby out with the bathwater, right? So what we are seeing is we love competition, we love innovation, we love more people coming into the space, but we're also finding that over the air, OTA gets undermeasured in a lot of um, new systems, and BBO only, right, the, the pure cord cutters and um, so on, get overmeasured simply because in some senses, big data is easier than panel data, because uh, it's just kind of there and it sits on servers and so on. So the future is very much a hybrid, I believe, um, of panel and big data, but it's gonna require all of us um, who are, um, on the measurement, but indeed on the media side of the business, to hold all of the new companies accountable to what I at least call in the US the 2020 rule. There's no more of 20% of the country that's BBO only, and there's at least 20% that's over the air. Now the numbers are drastically different um, uh, you know, in the UK, um, in uh, France, and so on, but we all have to hold measurement providers accountable to the truth of those specific markets and geographies. Uh, but overall, we love innovation, uh, and we love having more people to be able to do business with. Okay, now I'm gonna open it up to audience questions in a minute, but I've just got one more question. This is when, when we see more migration from broadcast linear into streaming, two of the challenges that sort of jump out are opportunity to see, because especially in America, it's been a big thing with streaming services talking about better quality of viewing, as in less ads, so ad, lower ad load, and then the ability to build reach quickly, because Broadcast Linear always gave you these big flagship shows, everybody watched at the same time. If you had a big event coming on at the bank holiday, you could get a lot of impact in a short space of time. I mean, in streaming, where everyone's on demand or they're all over the place and it's very fragmented, how do we deal with that? Okay, so, um so I'm gonna address the second half of your question first because uh, we are marketers as much as we are a media company because we got a whole bunch of shows to launch every single year and these are massive marketing campaigns that we undertake so I'm privileged enough to sit in the belly of that and help deal with the reach frequency and so on. So um, any media plan for a mass market brand at least, I'm not start talking about you know, a D2C brand that's starting on the internet and is super early in its life stage, needs to start with big reach. And then you can you know, uh, extend your reach, add on targeting, and so on. And we've learned this from our own experience. And certainly uh, in the US, um, broadcast is the only place to generate massive reach at, on a given day, on a given time, a Thursday night, whether it's a football game or ghosts or you know, um, fire country or something like that. So broadcast is very much um, a key part of the media mix. And while I've gone on this tangent, I've forgotten the first half of your question. What was the first, first one, half of your question? Opportunity to see. Yes. So ad loads. Yeah, yeah. 
So I'm actually going to pivot this opportunity to see question, right? Because we, we talk a lot about opportunity to see as you know, less ad load, more ad load, et cetera. That's not what I worry about. I worry about the fact that we're equalizing a TV impression, which is often on a big screen, often professionally produced content, great ad creative, with invisible, inaudible, sub two second ads on other players. So if I'm concerned about opportunity to see as a marketer, I'm concerned about things that never make it on screen, that are measured at the nanosecond level. I'm less concerned about whether it's you know, 10 minutes of ad time or six minutes of ad time, because if it's professionally produced content and professionally produced ad creative, um, that's not what I worry about. But I worry very much about the equivalization of impressions between TV, broadcast or connected TV, um, and something that's in invisible and inaudible. Okay. Now, has anyone got any questions before we continue? We've got about two and a half minutes, time for at least two questions, hopefully. Oh, good, we can one. see you now. OK, so just on this um, reach build then again. Yes. Let's, I mean, you mentioned broadcast TV has given you the impact. And obviously, in this hybrid world, we can still use broadcast as the big impact and an incremental reach through streaming. But when we become much more streamed, how do we do it? I mean, is it about ad takeovers on the first break if everybody's watching whatever they're watching on demand on a, sh on, a C on a service, can they get the first ad from one brand, for example? Can we make sure that every single ad on that streaming service is theirs for a day? Um, so first of all, I think fortune telling, right, or uh, looking in a um, glass ball um, is quite pointless because really then we should all just be, you know, fortune telling and applying our um, uh, fortune telling skills over at the city and like, you know, <laughs> making even more money. Uh, but I think practically speaking, those are all things we can be open to. Uh, I was lucky enough to be in, around in the early days of the internet where there were homepage takeovers um, and then it became, and then display became what display be has become today, which is not a great reason each builder um, in a traditional sense, right? So look, I think people are going to watch great sporting events. People are going to watch um, news events, but also quite importantly, um, and this is why a lot of streamers in the US drop shows day and date specific, uh, not just in a bingeable way, because we know that you know there's certain Disney shows that show up on Wednesdays or Fridays and certain Paramount shows that show up on Sundays, and there's still a role for that. So I'm not going to probably prognosticate too much about what's going to happen in the future, but you should know that we're here with our advertising partners to problem solve in real time and to continue to deliver and build massive reach. Okay, great. All right. Well, I think we are out of time now. So, Radha, thank you very much. And um, thank you very much. Thank you all for being here.